In this video, we're going to build a Raspberry Pi Power Rover that we can move using a PlayStation 4 controller. As usual, we'll go over the hardware assembly process and then move on to the software that we'll need to control the robot. We'll see how to use Python to control the motors, as well as the steps for getting the controller recognized by the Raspberry Pi and the button input into our Python script. From there, we can use it to drive the robot around in any direction we want. All right, let's do this. This video is sponsored by PCBWay. They're currently offering a wide variety of deals for the holiday season and the spring festival. Make sure to check out their coupons so that you can save while placing your PCB manufacturing and assembly orders with PCBWay. They were kind enough to send me a care package for the holiday season. As always, I was impressed with the high quality of their boards. One thing that sets PCBWay apart is that they're not a broker. Rather, they're a PCB manufacturing and assembly house. With friendly staff and great facilities, I highly recommend PCB Way for your PCB manufacturing and assembly needs. For this video I'll be using a Raspberry Pi 4 and a pre-flash SD card running the Raspbian operating system. I'll also use a Raspberry Pi motor hat and a robotics kit that includes a laser cut chassis, a couple of DC motors and their respective mounting brackets, two 47 millimeter rubber wheels and a caster wheel, and all the assembly hardware that's needed to put everything together. For power, I'll also add a couple of USB batteries that we typically use for charging our mobile devices. Lastly, I'll also use an official PlayStation 4 controller. I'll start by adding some standoffs to the Raspberry Pi so that I can more easily mount it on the chassis. I'll put into the Raspberry Pi my pre-flash SD card. Next, I'll connect the motor hat. One change I did was reworking the original chassis of the SDS Pi robot. I wanted to use two batteries instead of one so that I can run it for a little bit longer. No matter what your choice is, we can now mount the Raspberry Pi onto the chassis. Then we can mount the motor brackets and the DC motors themselves and also place the wheels onto the motor shaft. We can then mount the caster wheel to the front and then connect the motors to the motor hat. Keep in mind the polarity of the motors and also take note of the motor channels where you're placing the wires on the motor hat. The chassis I design allows me to mount an ultrasonic sensor to the front, but this is an optional step for this project. The last thing I'll need is to mount the batteries that I'll need to power the robot. This simply requires a few screws on the bottom, putting the wing tips in place, and using a couple of rubber bands to hold everything together. You might be surprised how stable and easy to assemble this design is. I'll connect one of the batteries to the motor voltage input of the motor hat, whereas the other I'll use to power the Raspberry Pi by using the 5V and the ground pins of the Raspberry Pi that are broken out to the motor hat. Now that we have the hardware assembled, it's time to move on to the software side of things. As I showed on another video, I've configured the Raspbian operating system to run SSH, which allows me to connect remotely onto the Raspberry Pi from my laptop computer without the need of a monitor and a keyboard connected directly to the Pi. Once logged in, the first thing I want to do is test out the motor hat and see if I can control the motors. I'll create a couple of directories and download a Python library that allows the Raspberry Pi to communicate with the motor hat. The library includes a number of examples for controlling different kinds of motors. Before we're able to use them, we'll need to enable I2C communication for the Raspberry Pi. To do that, we'll use the Raspberry config menu and enable the I2C option. As a sanity check, we can run the I2C detect command 
to test that there are no problems in the communication between the Pi and the hat. If we see the 6F address show up, it means that everything is ready to go. In that case, we can open up the dctest.py script and make a few changes to run the two motors. If you're not familiar with the command line text editor of VI, I recommend using something else like nano. You'll see that the address 6F is used in creating an instance of the Raspberry motor hat class. As I connected the two motors to the motor hat on channels one and two, I'll remove 3 and 4 from the script. Also to ensure that my wiring is correct, I'll check that the left motor is connected to channel 1 and the right motor is connected to channel 2. With those changes in place, I'll open a new tab on my terminal, create another SSH connection to Raspbian and use that to run my script. Before doing so, I'll prop the robot up so that it doesn't drive around while still connected to power. So now when I run the script, I need to keep an eye out for the motors running when they're supposed to and in the direction that I specified. After testing the motors, I'll download my demos repository for the Raspberry Pi. This will allow me to save some time as I'll use a motor control library that I've written for a different project. I'll use the command line utility git to download the repository, change directories into it, and I'll be able to see the motor control library alongside some examples. Next, I'll use the python package manager pip to install the python module that will allow me to communicate with the PlayStation 4 controller. After installing the module, I'll need a few additional packages for things to work correctly. The easiest way to do this is by running the Pi2PS4C utility with the init option. With those packages installed, it is now time to pair the PlayStation 4 controller to the Raspberry Pi. Although the previous command suggests that we use the DS4DRV command, we'll do it a little bit differently. We'll use the BlueZ command line utility as it is more updated than the one suggested previously. As usual, you can find the commands in the repository page for this project. The link is in the description of the video. After entering the scan mode on the Raspberry Pi, we'll need to put our PlayStation 4 controller in pairing mode. To do that, we'll hold the PlayStation and the share button for a few seconds. You'll know when the controller enters pairing mode because the light bar will be flashing rapidly. When it does so, the next scan on the Raspberry Pi should pick up the controller. To continue the process, we'll need to make a note of the MAC address of the controller. You can pick that up from the corresponding line out of the scan. If everything works well, after we issue the connect command, we should see the prompt change from Bluetooth to wireless controller. It did take me a couple of times to get to this step, so if you're having troubles, I'd recommend restarting the whole BlueZ sequence of commands. Now that we have our PlayStation 4 controller paired, it's time to test out whether we can read the button commands from Python. I'll open up the ps4 underscore test.py script and use the ls command to show the input devices available to the Raspberry Pi. If things are working correctly, it'll be listed as GS0. If yours is listed as something different, you'll want to modify line 14 in the example. With that being checked, I can go to my second tab, change into the examples directory and run the script. Now when I press any of the buttons on the PlayStation 4 controller, I'll see the input printed out to the terminal. Notice that there is a bit of a mismatch between the actual button being pressed and what's printed, but with a minor adjustment in the code, we still are able to use each one of the buttons. Now that we know how to read PlayStation 4 controller inputs into Python, it's time to have a little bit of fun. For the sake of saving some time, I'll copy the PS4 underscore test script and give it the name robot underscore PS4.py. With that code as a starting point, I'll simply need to add the motor controller commands that I want to run depending on which button is being pressed. Just as a sanity check, I can press some of the other buttons first. And also remember to turn on the battery to power the motors. 
and then press the actual button that will get interpreted in Python as the X button being pressed and released. In my case, that'll be the circle button. With that working, it is finally time to complete all the different commands for running the robot in different directions. I'll choose to use the arrow pad for this purpose. Notice that I'm running the motors at full speed, but if you want it, you can get the input from the analog joysticks and control the speed as well as the direction of the robot. With all the changes in place, it is time to take our DIY rover for a spin. I'll do a very quick test first, and now that things are working, I'll try to turn it into a dog toy. Well, at least I tried. It didn't quite serve the purpose that I was hoping for, but I built a little DIY rover that I can move around using my PlayStation 4 controller. If you like my videos, I invite you to my Patreon page where you can chip in a buck or two. That really helps me put in more time into the videos and release them quicker. But whatever you do, don't forget to like, subscribe, or leave me a comment. You can also interact with me on social media. I'm on Instagram, Twitter, and Facebook, and you can even use the community tab of the channel. Thank you for watching my videos, and I will see you next time.